established an exploratory committee in July. What's your time frame on a decision to actually run? Well, I'm, I'm weighing the options. I started uh, my efforts last February by going to Washington, New York, and New Hampshire. It's been a week there. Uh, and I will make a decision probably within the next several months. Uh, the first debates are already scheduled for the Reagan Library the yeah. first week in May. So um, over the next several months, I'm going to be meeting with uh, some of my friends and advisors and try and make a decision whether or not to proceed. I'm they, testing the waters right now. You want to get into those debates. Um, uh, the people who run those debates probably don't want you to <laughs> get in. How are you going to solve that problem? Well, um, if I decide to run, I, uh, my goal is to get in the presidential debates. And um, there are 19 that were held last time. Right. We've looked at all 19, and we've looked at the criteria of those individual debates. They're all sponsored by either media organizations or you know, political organizations or Republican groups. And so um, we're going we're gonna to work very hard. I'm a fighter. I had a fight to have a press conference at the Southern Republican Leadership Conference to announce my seriously considering running position back in April, and I prevailed after they had tried to keep me out. So um, I'm going to use a combination of attorneys, of uh, <laughs> public relations, and, and, I, and the fair thing to do. And, and hopefully I can prove myself so they, they will just invite me and I won't have to fight my way in. S step by step. Um, well, well, let's point out the obvious. You are a Republican. You're an openly gay male. And as you have noted, um, evangelicals, uh, people who are uh, opposed to legally codified civil rights for gay people tend to make up the majority of Iowa caucus voters, not a super majority. Mm -hmm. What do you say to these people? What are you arguing to them specifically? Why should they take you seriously? Well, I'm looking at it from two different points of view. One is, you know, in Iowa and also New Hampshire, 42% of the registered voters are independent in New Hampshire, 37% in, in Iowa. And of course, they're eligible to vote in either the caucuses in Iowa or the primary, certainly in New Hampshire. So I'm actually calling myself an independent Republican. If I do decide to, to run for president, I'm going to appeal to that, that market. I'm also, you know, I have a great credo as a Republican. <coughs> I've been in, in this business since I was four years old. You have. Um, and I've worked for President Reagan uh, as a senior uh, campaign consultant in, in 80 and 84. And I've worked on uh, president, you know, supporting President George H.W. Bush. I've worked on actually nine presidential campaigns, and uh, this would be my 10th. So um, I have very good Republican credentials. I'm coming at it from a little different point of view. Theodore Roosevelt was one of my political heroes. You know, he was the last Republican progressive president, and that was 100 years ago. But, but he, he opened up government to minorities. He was for complete equality and civil rights and made a lot of strides that way. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shake it up, as Michael Steele said when I met him in New Orleans. Um, what has been the reaction so far among people that, that you've met in Iowa New Hampshire? Are they supportive of you? Do they treat you like a curiosity? How do you convince the press <laughs> that you're more than just a curiosity, that you're a serious candidate? Well, I had two goals this year. One was to prove to people that this is not a stunt, that if I do run, this is very serious. And, and step two was to prove that I'm credible. And I think I have pretty well established that. And it's so interesting, Mark, the way people treat me now, friends, um, you know, uh, journalists, um, people are taking me much more seriously. Just last week, you know, I released this 90-second commercial. It's on my website at fredcarger.com. And, I mean, the New York Times did a, a feature story, uh, Fox News, right. CBS. CNN, um, Politico, and, and, you know, and hundreds of other. I got written up in Australia and Hungary. I had someone translate the Hungarian story. Not necessarily which was, helpful to the U.S., but <laughs> right. point taken. Well, certainly. know that, you know, if I do run, this would be a historic undertaking. Uh, there's never been a gay person who's ever run for president of the United States before. So there's great intrigue with that. And, and certainly in these two states, uh, they've been extremely courteous. I did have one bump in the road back in April. In, um, in the state of Iowa, I just had a reception there, a meet and greet. Um, I received a very nasty email from the Republican National Committeeman there, a guy named Steve Scheffler. Yeah, who's the head of the Christian, the, uh, the Iowa uh, value, the, right, the Iowa the, Christian Coalition there. Right. And um, I guess he's done this to others, but, but not quite to the extent he did to me. And he threatened me. And he said, you and the radical homosexual community are not welcome in Iowa. I'm going to work overtime, and this was an interesting choice of words, to abort your candidacy. And um, I've tried to meet with him. I've tried to reach out with him. I mean, to reach out to him. He's never even met me, but I'd like to, you know, that's what I'm doing. I'm talking to party officials. I'm talking to the gay community. I'm talking to everybody, and, um, and I'm getting a great response. Well, let's, let's move to politics uh, in general. Um, how would you get President Obama's uh, first term or, or the first two-plus years of his term so far. What grade did you give it? 
Well, it depends. I mean, uh, certainly on, on, on issues, uh, gay civil rights issues and things that he promised us, he's, he gets a D, I mean, at best. They've got the Matthew Shepard you know, hate crimes bill through, which is kind of a no-brainer, but, but nothing else. I'm hopeful, you know, this month in, in lame duck, we'll get Don't Ask, Don't Tell passed, uh, finally repealed. What about uh, taxes and foreign policy? I, I was very disappointed. I, I actually was a Hillary Clinton supporter. I maxed out donor to her last time. I was not happy with the Republican field, and so I kind of reluctantly um, was you know joining the Obama support effort I didn't support him nor did I vote for him but I was hoping the best because our country was in very dire straits when he took office I came to his inaugural I was hoping the best because he kind of had I thought what Ronald Reagan had and Reagan was had that incredible ability to kind of boost morale in this country and Obama had said during the campaign repeatedly he was gonna spend the first two years on nothing but the economy well he spent the first, you know, two weeks, and he got the stimulus bill passed, and then went on. And and I was very disappointed because, you know, if he were to turn around this economy, then he can do all kinds of things like health care and 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 funding for education and things like that. But no, I'm very disappointed. I think, I think he's not happy. He seems depressed to me. Hmm. Um, his wife seems very depressed. I don't think they're they're having a good time in this. Well, you, you you certainly seem uh, seem like a. a uh, a rock rib uh, Republican here. Um, uh, let me ask you on Don't Ask, Don't Tell um, hearings right now in the Senate. Um, you support repeal. Does it trouble you, though, that 60 percent or so of soldiers in combat units have expressed or say they would be discomfited somewhat uh, were integration of gays in the military to happen now? How is, how is the process, and you think, how will it best play out? Well, First off, and, and actually, you know, I mean, you can look at that study different ways. Yeah. You know, 70 percent really had no objection. It was the Marines that had, you know, the biggest problem, of course, the Commandant, uh, General Amos, is the one who has objected most uh, vociferously right. to this. So, I mean, you know, this has been studied for 17 years. Um, President Clinton tried to end this, this uh, discriminatory, discriminatory policy, as Harry Truman did. You know, Harry Truman, don't forget, in 1948, with a, the stroke of the pen by executive order, eliminated segregation in the military. It was the right thing to do. And those numbers from the military were, you know, four out of five soldiers were against it. Well, now we've got, you know, seven out of ten that support it. It's a no-brainer. It's, it's, it teaches children, younger people in this country, discrimination, gay and straight, it's a terrible example to tell people, you, you can't come in the military, the code of conduct requires you to, you know, honesty first. If you do come in, you have to lie about it. It's, it's, it's really a disgrace, well, and, and our will, country uh, should be embarrassed. We will see what happens with that and with your campaign. Say your website once more. Sure, it's Fred Carger or Fred Who .com. Fred who .com. Okay.